Good evening, Brian School Bulldogs. Tonight is Scholastic Family Night, and it is me, Mr. Roth, here to read you a story. Yes, it's me, Mr. Roth. Some of you may be asking, Mr. Roth, did you do something different with your face? I did. You've probably only seen me with a mask since the start of the school year. And at the end of the summer, I shaved my beard. But it is really me, Mr. Roth. Some of you might be saying, Mr. Roth, why did you do that? Well, change is good, my young friends. Sometimes when things have been the same way for a long time, it's good to change them. So that's what I did. Now tonight, I am excited to read you, like Mr. Weika did last week, a story. So I hope you're nice and comfortable. I hope that you're in a spot in your house where you can relax, maybe in your pajamas, maybe with your family, and you're cuddling up to hear a good story before bedtime. The story I'm going to read to you tonight is by one of my favorite authors from when I was a child. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited to read it to you. It's a story you may not have heard before, and it's called Tifty Doofty. That's right, Tifty Doofty by William Stieg. I'm going to show you a picture of it now before we start reading so you can see the title page. So I'm turning my camera around, and you'll notice that you may see as we read the story, the hands of my trusty helper because we're going old school here tonight. So I have a helper to turn the pages as I read, but you could see the title page there, Tifty Doofty by William Stieg. William Stieg is a great writer who, just to show you another book that he's written, he wrote the original one and only Shrek and many other stories that you may have heard of. If you've heard this, of the story called The Amazing Bone or Sylvester and the Magic Pebble, he wrote those stories too. But tonight we're going to read Tifty Doofy, and you'll see on the title page a picture of Tifty right there. And here our story begins. Tifky Doofky, the garbage collector, went his rounds in a jolly mood. It was first-rate weather. He planned to wind up work in time to get to the annual picnic of the Oil and Vinegar Club over in Moose Hollow. He had already collected a truckload of stuff. Muck, slops, dirt rags, cinders, corn cobs, bones, bottles, cans, paper, fur, and feathers from the barber shop. All sorts of junk and gimcracks and the rubbish from the carnival that had just come to town. At Madame Tarsal's place, Adding her trash to his truck, he made up his mind to get his fortune told. On such a day, something out of the ordinary was bound to happen, and he had to know what it was going to be. Madame Tarsal led him behind a curtain, where an amber light shone on a round table. Tifki sat with his mouth open, as she peered into the crystal ball. Suddenly, her eyes lit up. My dear Tifki Doofki, she quacked. Guess what I see in the crystal ball? This very day, before the sun goes down, you will fall in love with the one you are going to marry. Nothing you do can keep it from happening. Tifki Doofki's tail whacked the chair he was sitting on. Is it anyone I already know, he asked. It is no one you know, said the fortune teller, dropping her lids.
Tifki Doofki hoisted his suspenders, kissed Madame Tarsal's smack on the beak, sailed out to his truck, and headed for the town dump. He was already dreaming of his love to be. She put him in mind of rosebuds, dewdrops, starlight, chocolate pudding. The stink of the garbage did not faze him. He respected garbage. The furniture in his home, the bed he slept on, the dishes he ate from, his footstool, his lamp, his umbrella, the pictures on his walls, all came out of the garbage. The clothes he wore came out of the garbage. A patch here, a stitch there, and he was even a bit of a dude with arm garters and spats in season. Maybe I'll find her at the dump, he mused as he barreled along, but more likely it'll be at the oil and vinegar pardon me, Oil and Vinegar Club Picnic. Soon the dump lay before him, a sea of garbage. Crows were rummaging in the debris for dainty tidbits. Tifty tilted the bin of his truck. As the slop slid and tumbled out, something caught his quick eye. A necklace, a gleam with emeralds on a bed of sauerkraut. He lifted it with careful paws. How lovely! He would have to find out who had lost it. Meanwhile, he fastened it around his own neck. His day's work done, he was ready now for the picnic. He put his truck in reverse, backed up, wheeled around, and rattled down Knocknagel Road. Near Waddle Corners, he caught up with a chicken pedaling a bike. He honked and prepared to pass, but the bike curved and keeled over, and the chicken lay under it, kicking and clucking. Tifki hit the brake and leaped out. Darn these newfangled bikes, the chicken ranted. She was an old biddy with a red babushka. Whisked me around like a whirligig, she went on. Something amiss with those wacky wheels. Are you okay, ma'am? asked Tifki Doofki. Don't know yet, said the biddy. Help me up, young fellow. Don't just stand there like a totem pole. Tifki got her under the wings and heaved her up to her feet. She shook, blink, shifted her shawl. I'm back in shape, she announced, much obliged. Then I'll be trotting along, Tifki said, going to meet my love today before the sun goes down. I know, said the biddy, and that's her necklace you're wearing. Tifki looked at the old chicken in astonishment. He was always ready to believe in magic. You've done me a favor, young fellow, declared the biddy. I'm going to do you a favor. One good turn merits another, correct? Tifki wished she'd hurry up. It was getting late, as he could see by the watch he'd found at the dump last Christmas. The old biddy took a small bow and arrow, small bow and arrow out of her basket. Lifting her skirt, she pulled three feathers from her left thigh. She pressed the feathers to her beak, mumbling mysterious words, and swiftly fletched the arrow with the feathers. Young fellow, she said, I will shoot this magic arrow with this magic bow. Follow whither it leads, and there you will find your true love. I appreciate this, said Tifki. Tut, tut, clucked the old biddy. It's just a trifle, nothing to get flustered over. Enjoy what follows. She squinted one of her red-rimmed eyes, aimed the arrow, and let it zing.
Thanks again, yelled Tifki, and he was off with the arrow racing down the road. The old Biddy was really a villainous witch who detested Madame Tarsal, her fellow fowl, and always tried to foil her fortune telling. As Tifki Doofki ran after the arrow, she cackled with evil glee. After going straight for a while, the arrow swerved left. Then it switched and swooped right. Then it described some crazy circles and zipped off in a new direction, with Tif Tifki keeping a pace of it. All at once it dipsy-doodled, looped off left again, zigging and zagging around trees and out into a field where it fell to the ground. There stood a lady, slender and graceful, holding a parasol which is a fancy word for an umbrella. Tifki's heart hammered as he approached her, his cap in his paw. He was not worried about what he would say. The right words always came when he needed them. Grinning, he bowed with his tail in a strong curve. When he straightened up to look into her eyes, there were no eyes to look into. There was no face, only a shock of straw. The lady was a scarecrow. How unpleasant! Tifty Doofky started back to his truck. But when he got where he thought he was going, there was no sign of the truck or of the road he had left it on. He walked this way, then that way. It was not the same world as before. Where was he? He walked further, looking for something familiar, trying to get his bearings. A well-dressed cat perched on a tree stump was strumming a mandolin with his claws, perfectly at home in this strange place. Tifki went over to him, feeling shy. Sir, excuse me, he said. Have you seen a garbage truck? Garbage truck? What's that? queried the cat. He had lazy yellow eyes. Are we anywhere near Knocknagel Road, town of Popville? Never heard of either, said the cat. Then I'm loster than I thought I was, said Tifty. Perhaps I can help, the cat suggested, laying down his mandolin. I was on my way to a picnic. I'm supposed to be meeting my future wife today, before the sun goes down. Hmm, said the cat, stroking a whisker. The sun is pretty low already. Let me have a button off your vest, will you? And without waiting for leave to do so, he took out a pocket scissors and snipped a button from Tifki's vest. Holding the button between his paws, he closed his yellow eyes and recited, I ask this button off his vest. Should he go east or should he go west? Should he go north or should he go south? Put the answer in my mouth. He waited a few moments. Then, oom, um, babaloom, he said, your truck is on the far side of that ridge. Sir, many thanks, said Tifki, and he hurried off. On the far side of the ridge, he heard sweet bells dingling, but saw no bells. He heard a voice calling, Tifki Doofki, Tifki Doofki, but he saw no one. He was no coward, but he began to feel uneasy. This way, Tifki, said the voice. He walked toward it, listening, and then there was no ground beneath his feet. He was falling, falling and turning, turning and falling. And thud, he met the ground and lay there in a stupor. The hazy world wobbled round him.
Some cows ambled by, nodding, chewing, and mooing. Tifty lay there a long time. When he opened his eyes, he could see the cliff he had fallen over. He ached. He knew it was very late. How could he possibly get to the picnic, he wondered, and meet his love? Well, hadn't Madame Tarsal said nothing could keep him from meeting her? Why worry and get wrinkles? It would happen. A man with a net darted past, chasing a butterfly. He raced back to where Tifki lay and stood over him, staring, but saying nothing. I fell over that cliff, explained Tifki. I know, said the man. I've been waiting for you to come too. I wanted to ask you, are there any butterflies up there? Unexpectedly, he put the net over his head and turned a somersault. I didn't see any, said Tifki, getting up. Tifki Dookie's the name. Who are you? Me? I'm a lunatic, said the butterfly hunter. A lunatic is a fancy word for a crazy person. Oh, said Tifki, then probably you wouldn't know the way to Knocknagel Road. Oh, yes, I would, the lunatic asserted. Knocknagel Road is right down the... And he vanished before Tifki's astounded eyes. The cliff, the whole scene melted and was gone and Tifki was back on Knocknagel Road. How the devil did this happen? Well, the old biddy who had been holding him under a spell had to go home in order to lay an egg. This egg demanded all her attention and tired her. So she turned herself into a pair of old sneakers, something she did now and then because she found it restful. Tifki Doofki had been forgotten. He was off the hook. He flopped down on a rock, exhausted. The sun was low and in flames. Well, Madame Tarsal had better get a new crystal ball. The day was about done, and no civilized soul to fall in love with was anywhere to be seen, only swallows swooping after insects. Tifki Doofki nodded. At the third and deepest nod, the world went away and he was asleep. A dream came. Madame Tarsal flew overhead, her crystal ball clutched in her webbed feet. As she passed over him, he found himself face to face with his love. They were sitting in a field of daisies, caressing one another. Her embrace was gentle, sinuous, but it began getting stronger and stronger. And suddenly, Tifki Doofki jumped to his feet. He was wide awake and in the coils of a boa constrictor. He tugged at the powerful snake, but it only tightened its hold. Help, he shouted, help! But soon he could shout no longer. The breath of life was being pressed out of him. He decided to face death with dignity. The sun was now on the rim of the earth, about to leave this gruesome scene. Goodbye, dear world, said Tifki in his mind. Goodbye, great sun, and goodbye, love, whoever, wherever you are. Someone came tearing down the road. Dolores, she shouted, at ease. The boa constrictor instantly loosened its hold, then carefully unwound itself from around Tifki Doofki and lay obediently on the ground. It had escaped from its coop at the carnival. 
Tipke's rescuer was Estrella, the snake's fearless trainer. Tipke had never seen anyone who looked so good to him. It took him no time at all to fall in love. That's my necklace you're wearing, said Estrella. What on earth, where on earth did you find it? At the dump when I was ungoading, unloading the garbage today, Tifke heard himself say. His mind had stopped working. He was entranced. You're a garbage collector? My dear father was a garbage collector. What a coincidence. Estrella was sure she had never met anyone so manly yet modest as the one who stood before her, dazed with love. They gazed at each other with eyes brimful of feeling. As the sun sank below the horizon, both were bathed in the same golden afterglow. Madame Tarsal knew her onions after all. Boys and girls, I hope you really enjoyed that story. My assistant is helping me come into view here. I'm so glad I had such a good assistant to help me with this old school reading tonight. I hope you enjoyed Scholastic Family Night and thank you so much for joining us. My assistant's coming around so he can stop the camera for me or he wants to say hello first. Goodbye, boys and girls. Have a good night's sleep.